Uh, God's really moved in here this morning and touch, 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 touched our brother, and we're so glad that, amen, he listened to that voice. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to condense this down a little bit and uh, just give you something that God gave me a few years ago and uh, hope it blesses your heart. But I was going to speak today on unseen hands. Unseen hands. And we don't, we don't realize it, but God's hands are working in our life. We don't see them. It's like the wind. We don't see it. We see the effects of it. But God is always working in your life. Those unseen hands was working in this service this morning. They was working, amen. And just to, just to give you a scripture, I'll, I'll just read this scripture just to, just to lay, lay a, just a little bit of a foundation here, just to give you a scripture. Jesus was talking to his disciples, Mark chapter 16, and verse 15, he said unto them, uh, go ye into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. These signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. And they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Everybody say hands. 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 Amen. There's three things that God showed me in the Bible that his hands do for us. And you may, you may never thought of this, or you, you, I'm sure you've read it, but you may never thought about it. But God's hands, they're unseen hands. They're always working in your life. You don't always see them, but they're there. Somebody say amen. Amen. I want to show you three things in the Bible real quick. I won't, once again, I won't hold you a long time. I want to show you three things in the Bible that God's hands do for you. Amen. The first one is in uh, Exodus 14. I want you to turn with me there real quick. Exodus 14. L look at verse 22. I, like I said, I'm going to condense this down a little bit. Amen. But I want to leave this with you. I want to show you three things that, that God's hands do for us. Amen. Exodus 14. Look at verse 22. You all know the story how that Moses went and after God spoke to him in the burning bush and he's going to Pharaoh to deliver God's people, amen. And he's went to Pharaoh and went to Pharaoh and over and over again. Finally, amen, Pharaoh released the children of Israel and we're gonna pick up at verse 22. And the children of Israel went out into the midst of the sea upon the dry ground and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. And the Egyptians pursued. Now Pharaoh has turned them loose and he's decided he's gonna go back after them and recapture them. And he went in after them to the midst of the sea, even all of Pharaoh's horses, his ch chariots and his horsemen. And it came to pass that in the morning watch, the Lord looked unto the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and of the cloud and troubled the host of the Egyptians and took off their chariot wheels so that they drave them heavily so that the Egyptians said, let us flee from the face of, of Israel for the Lord fighteth for them against the Egyptians. Amen. God began to show me one of the things that his hands do, they fight for us. Somebody say amen. God's hands fight for us. And, and this, this is a true story I'm about to tell here real quick. Uh, I got an email four or five years ago and so, some divers uh, went down into the Red Sea. True story. Some divers went down in there and they was, you know, archaeologists and divers and pa paleontologists, all these things. They was looking around for stuff. And they began to uncover some solid gold chariot wheels. True story now. They began to uncover chariot wheels, solid gold. And they thought, what in the world is chariot wheels doing at the bottom of the Red Sea? Why are they here? And they came back out and they took pictures of this now. I've got pictures and all of it. They photographed those chariot wheels and, 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 and they, they came back out and, and one of them 
remembered a story in the Bible. And they went back and reverted back to God's word and they found this story where Pharaoh's army went in after the children of Israel and the Bible said that the angels took the chariot wheels off. Somebody say amen. And you know what Pharaoh said? They said, let us flee from the Egyptians for the Lord fighteth for them. Let us flee from them for the Lord fighteth for them. Amen. First thing I want you to remember this morning is that God's hands, they fight for us. They're hands that fight. You may not know it tonight, but somebody's fighting for you. You may not realize it this morning that you give your life to God and you turn your life over to God. I tell you, the devil is going to do everything he can from that moment on to try to destroy you, to try to discourage you, to try to get you to quit and to give up. But you're not in this thing alone. You're not in this thing by yourself. Amen. There is some unseen hands and they're God's hands and they're fighting for you. I want to tell somebody today, if you're sick today, if you're discouraged, God is fighting for you. Somebody say amen. Woo! He is. Yes, listen to this. I, I got to read this again. And, and, and took off their chariot wheels so that they drave them heavily so that the Egyptians said, let us flee from the face of Israel for the Lord fighteth for them. Uh, those unseen hands are fighting for you. You may not see them, Georgie, but they're there. When the enemy comes, amen, when the devil comes, when trouble comes, when all these things come, somebody is fighting for you. God is fighting for you. Those unseen hands are fighting for you. You may not see them, but they're there. Somebody say amen. God is fighting for you. I, I was just thinking quickly about all the messes. I, has anybody ever been in a mess besides me? Well, <laughs> the devil, boy, he's something, ain't he? Woo, he never gives up. But I don't care. How about you? Hey, Amen. Let us flee, for the Lord fighteth. Those unseen hands, they're fighting for you. Somebody said, I ain't got nobody. Yes, you do. You got God. He's fighting for you. I don't care if your family hates you. I don't care what's going on in your life. I don't care if everybody's turned their back on you. I don't care what they say about you. Amen. If you got God, you got the Holy Ghost. Amen. You got somebody fighting for you. And I'm telling you, when God fights, he gets a job done. You're going to win. You're not going to be the loser. You're going to be the winner. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. Those unseen hands, they're fighting for you. I'm glad somebody's fighting for me. Look at, look at Joshua 23 and 10. Somebody grab that and read it real quick. I'm working with one hand here. Joshua 23 and 10. Somebody grab that and read it real quick. Joshua, real quick. Somebody grab that. Read it, brother. You got there. Ten of you shall chase a thousand, for the Lord your God, He is He it is that fighteth for you as He hath promised you. <laughs> Woo! God said, "I'm the one that fights for you as I promised you." Thank you, brother. That's the right one. That's right. Joshua twenty three ten says, "The Lord's fighting for you as He promised." Is that what it says, Greg? As He hath promised you. When you go home today, go home and realize somebody's fighting for you. The devil's fighting against you, but God's fighting for you. Come on. The devil's fighting against you, man. 
You see, we, we, we get into this mentality that, that woe me, poor is me, you know, the devil's fighting me, the devil's fighting me, and, and we just dwell on that, but we never stop and think about the devil's fighting against you, but God is fighting for you. Somebody say amen. He's fighting for you. With all the messes that I've been in in my life, if God had not been fighting for me, I wouldn't be here today, but hallelujah, God was fighting for me, and here I am. Hallelujah. Those unseen hands, they're fighting for you. Real, real fast, number two, turn to Exodus 33. I want to show you another one. Exodus 33. Man, when they turn the heat on here, they turn it on. Exodus 33. <laughs> Let me show you something else those unseen hands do. Exodus 33 and 17. This one and one more and I'll be finished. And the Lord said unto Moses, I will do this thing also that thou hast spoken. For thou hast found grace in my sight. I know thee by name. I don't care who knows my name as long as Jesus knows it. Amen. Hallelujah. Woo. And, he, and he said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. This is uh, Moses talking to God. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee. He made it pass before us this morning. And I will proclaim thy name of the Lord before thee. I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious. I will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. Watch this now. And he said, thou cannot see my face, for there shall no man see me and live. And the Lord said, behold, there is a place by me. and Thou shalt stand upon a rock. And it shall come to pass while my glory passeth by that I will put thee in a cliff to the rock and I will cover thee with my hand. There's that hand again. While I pass by. And I will take away my hand and thou shalt see my back parts. But my face shall not be seen. There's that unseen hand again. You know, you know what it done to Moses? It covered him. It covered him. First of all, those unseen hands, they fight for you. Number two, Bob, the, the, those unseen hands, they got you covered. They got you covered. No matter what the devil tries to do to you, there's a covering over you. Are you hearing me? There is a covering over you. God has you covered. No matter what the devil is trying to do, God has a covering over you. He's got you covered. Boy, I don't know what I'd be today if God hadn't had me covered sometimes. Come on, somebody help me. Where, where would you be today if God hadn't had you covered sometimes? Amen? We don't even know it. We don't even realize this. But there's been many times in our life that we was going down the road in an automobile. And if it had not been for the covering of God, amen, we would be dead today. Huh? My dad drank and crouched around for years. Bars and guns and everything you could think of. Hello? And if God hadn't had him covered, he wouldn't be here today. Since my dad got saved, he's had I don't know how many heart attacks, about 17 strokes. You don't know what the phone calls we've got and said he won't be here in the morning. He can't make it. But God had him covered, those unseen hands, those unseen hands. God had him covered, and he's still here today. 71 years old, still here today. Huh? God said, Moses, I'm going to pass by you, and my hand's going to cover you while I pass by. Those unseen hands have you covered. Amen. You a child of God, you got some covering over you, amen. And the devil can tell you all day long, I'm gonna kill you, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that, amen. But I want you to know right now, God's got a covering over you and he will do no such thing. He will do no more than God allows him to do. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. Woo! You don't see them, but they're there. Those unseen hands are working in your life. 
You remember that time you, that tractor and trailer almost run over you? But something happened, you can't explain it. Something moved or you moved or something just happened, amen, and you come out of it. Hello, that's those unseen hands. They got you covered. Are you hearing me? You're not in this thing alone. I'm about to hurry. I'm not in this thing alone. I'm not by myself. He said, Lord, I'll be with you always, even to the end of the world. I'm not alone. You're not alone. Those hands are working. Hallelujah. My God, they're there. gave me the right message for today. I started singing that song for Georgie, but I didn't know those unseen hands was going to go back here. Where'd he go? And start working. And I didn't do anything. I was just singing. That's all I, you know, those unseen hands started working. And that brother came and gave his life back to God. The devil will say, oh, if you, ever, if you ever went away from God, you can't never come back. That's a lie. That's a lie. <laughs> if you want to know the truth about it, I'd say about 90% of people in church has probably strayed away at one time or another. Oh, not me, preacher. Good for you. I started preaching when I was about 10 years old. I did it up. I got about 16. I got a car. Got interested in women, girls. I wasn't out robbing banks and committing all kinds of sin and craziness, but I got away from God a little bit. I quit going to church like I should have. I didn't preach there for about three or four years. And one day God just, Started messing stuff up in my life. Everything was going the wrong direction. I got a mess. It's not no kind of trouble, just things wasn't going right. I'll never forget this. One day I went and looked in a mirror in my bathroom. I had, I had my own home at 18 years old. I went and looked in a mirror in my bathroom. I knew I wasn't doing what I was supposed to be doing. God spoke to me in an audible voice and he called my name. And he said, Joey, I love you. I want to tell you, I broke in a million pieces that day. And I said, I got to get myself straightened out. Huh? Don't, don't ever let the devil tell you that if you've ever strayed away or went down a different road or that you can't come back and get things right. Oh, yes, you can. Oh, he can't, but you can. I said, the devil can't, but you can. Somebody say amen. You can do it, praise God. All you got to do is have a made up mind. I'm tired of this. I'm coming back to Jesus. I'm coming back to the Lord. Those unseen hands, they're working in my, they're calling me back. They're pulling me back. And I'm going back. Hallelujah. Woo. Right on back to the Father's house. Hallelujah. Praise God. Somebody say, God is fighting for me. Somebody say, God has me covered. Give him a big hand today, if you will, right quick. Those unseen hands. This is my last one. I'm going to stop right here. This is a good one. Isaiah 14, 27. Somebody flip to Isaiah 14, 27 real quick. Mm, here we go. Isaiah 14, 27. I got to read this one to you. This is a good one here. Glory. Somehow I went from Isaiah to Ecclesiastes somehow. Here we go. Isaiah 14, 27. Has everybody got that? Boy, right here will ring the bell now, right here. I'm going to read this to you. I'm going to hush in a minute. Let me get over here. Isaiah 14, 27. For the Lord of hosts hath purposed 
And who shall disannul it? And his hand, there's that hand again, Bob. We keep, we keep seeing that hand. And his hand is stretched out. And who shall turn it back? Number three, God's hands are hands that purpose. They're hands that purpose. So many people today feel like they don't have a purpose in their life. <laughs> There's no purpose for them. <clears throat> so many people today feel like they have no purpose, no meaning, no, no reason to exist. Watch this. For the Lord God of hosts hath purposed. God has a purpose for you. My brother, they come back to the Lord today, God has a purpose for you. God has a work for you. He's got a purpose for you. Amen. And who shall disannul it? It's saying nobody can. Nobody. What God's called you to do, can't no devil, can't nobody, can't no nothing stop you from doing it if you got a made up mind. The only person that can stop you from doing it is you. Is that right? You. Lord of mercy. I, I was thinking back, back years ago, 25 years ago, when I had old tents dragging them around, I had so much trouble. And Brother Bob, he, he, was, he was in a lot of that trouble. Man, he come got me so many times and hauled my tent places and helped me put it up and fix this and fix that. You know, the devil, he don't want the gospel preached. He don't want it preached. He don't want it. Brother Bob, he, he, he was with me in a lot of that trouble. Who shall disannul it? And his hand, God's hand, is stretched out and who shall turn it back? Who shall turn it back? No matter how the devil fights, I'm closing, no matter what the devil does, those unseen hands that's working in your life, the, de the devil, he, he, he's no match for them. What'd you say, Cla Ca Cassius Clay? Yeah. He thought he had the hands, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Till some of them other boys got a hold of him. What you said, not noggin, wasn't it? Huh. Who shall turn it back? There's no hand stronger than God's hands. Hello? Nothing can turn it back. Nothing can disannul it. God's hands are hands that purpose. Hello? There's hands that purpose. God's got a purpose for you. God's got a place for you. He's got a purpose. Nothing can turn it back. Nothing can disannul it. It's impossible. As long as you keep going for God, nothing, nothing, nothing can turn it back. You don't know it, but they're there. There, there are some unseen hands in your life working. They're fighting for you. They got you covered and they got a purpose for you. Somebody say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to Belize, Guatemala. God has a purpose for that. I've been going there since 1999. God has a purpose for it. Amen. And I can promise you one thing. If you've never been somewhere like that, you need to go. You'll send me. I appreciate it. You need to go. You need to go. It's amazing. They put up a tent. Six, seven, eight hundred people will be there. And there'll be two cars there. About two cars. People walk for miles to get in church over there. Huh? I've been to Africa and had thousands in my meetings. Not because I was anybody, because I'm nobody. They just come that way. They want it. They want it. People, America don't want it no more. America don't want it. Not, not many. Very few people in America want this anymore. Amen. God has a purpose. 
Don't ever forget. Pastor Greg, you come on back. Don't ever forget. There's unseen hands working in your life. You may not see them, but they're there. What are they doing there? They're fighting for you. What are they doing there? They got you covered. They cover you. I'd be dead today if I wasn't covered. How about you? <laughs> Go ahead, Brother Bob Taylor.